Uh, hi everyone. Uh, hello everyone. I'm I'm Mike, I'm Mike DiPaolo, um, and also helping me doing this presentation with any questions or uh, or technical support is Umberto Yagi. Uh, uh, my uh, nickname on all the networks is and on Git is uh, GitHub is Mike Depth three three three. Umberto is a, uh, H H Yagi, and on Git is Git S H Yagi. Uh, so we're going to be covering all the different uh, methods uh, slash tools which you can use to solve pulp operator, the Kubernetes operator, uh, OpenShift operator for pulp, which is you know our most robust and advanced and featureful way of installing pulp yet. Uh, one second. Okay. Or not? Uh, yeah, this is working. Looks like okay. So. Uh, Overview of the presentation. We'll start by installing Minikube, and I'll explain. Mike, why? Yeah, you're not sharing with us. Oh, sorry, my bad. Oh. Yes. There we go. The different methods for installing Pulp Operator with uh, both of our uh, Nicks there. There you go. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll start by installing Minikube, which is the uh, which is the like uh, the really cool tool to let you install uh, Pulp. I mean, sorry, let, to let you uh, run OpenShift uh, plus Kubernetes. Sorry, Kubernetes on top of uh, of a virtual machine or a container platform, and then we'll install Postgres, and then we'll install uh, Pulp operator via the tools, including the tool installations. So that's the tools are Helm and OLM, and uh, we'll also, and finally, we'll end up doing uh, installing Pulp from the source code repo as well. So, to begin with, why install a uh, Minikube? So, there is uh, an alternative uh, way of running an uh, a Kubernetes cluster or an OpenShift cluster on your uh, on your like. Developer laptop directly, or your you know your personal Linux laptop. It's called OpenShift CRC. However, it it takes it takes a lot of uh, effort and time to install. Uh, so most people just want to run the OpenShift cluster on top of a, you know a single container or a single virtual machine. Uh, and uh, Minikube is uh, you know does not have any of the OpenShift specific features. It's not uh, the OpenShift specific features needed to run. Uh, a, a pulp will be installed later, uh, just the, uh, as part of OLM. So, therefore, we can use Minikube, this light, lightweight Kubernetes distribution, and uh, it, it, it is really cool to see how much Minikube has developed. Like it started out with just like running on top of KVM VMs. Now it supports uh, several different uh, high, uh, uh, drivers, as they call them, which is basically container runtimes or uh, Virtual machine platforms, so you can see everything from you know KVM two to VirtualBox and VMware, along with Podman and Docker, of course. So, uh, to to start uh, installing Minikube, we're uh, we're going to just oh, oops, I'm trying to copy the text. Well, uh, I'm going to download this uh, binary. One second. And copying and pasting from a different window. Mike, can you grow the uh, text there? Oh, so yeah. Can of follow course. along. All of us at home can follow along. Yeah. Uh, is that. Maybe think... one more. Yeah. There we go. That looks, yeah. That's readable to me anyway. Yeah, right now I'm just trying to figure out how to copy and paste in the presentation. I'm just going to. I'm going to exit the. Uh, Full screen view. So, yeah, we are downloading the uh, the latest uh, binary, and of course, I'm using the downloads folder, which Windows users basically treat as their home directory nowadays. That's the running joke. Uh, and then we're gonna uh, do the install command, which basically just copies it and sets the uh, the usual permissions for the folder path. Oh, whoops, sorry, wrong. I did the wrong, uh, I was on the wrong slide. 
kubectl will be next. So there's the mini cube binary. We're going to install it as this mini cube. And then, as I mentioned earlier, we're using uh, I would, we're going to there's all these uh, containers in virtual machine development. We're using Podman uh, because it's installed on uh, Fedora 38 uh, uh, by default, basically, and it's also just you know very lightweight and we like using it. So uh, there's a lot of information printed out here. Like the Minikube has its own version, this into the Kubernetes version. Uh, it, it sets, it sets uh, environment variables like cube config, which is later used for the cube's, uh, cube CTL command. Uh, it's running Podman as root because if you try to do rootless Podman, you can run into a lot. There's lots of uh, extra things you have to set up or configure properly, like uh, like like UID ranges within the UID ranges. So it's easier just to use a uh, Podman with root. Uh, and there, uh, you can ignore this. Uh, that, that's harmless. And so now we have our uh, Podman container running. If I run sudo podman ps, uh, you can see it there. There's a, uh, a, con a container running named Minikube. And uh, the, the, another thing, too, if you want to use Minikube, uh, uh, Permanently, you can. There is a bash completion available, although we're not going to follow bash completion in Minikube, as well as your other favorite shells like Z shell. Uh, enable. Oops. Next, uh, we're en enabling the ingress, which is a. This is an nginx based ingress, and ingress is basically the. Uh, it's basically like a proxy, for uh, slash way of accessing the. the all the applications from outside the cluster. Although in this case, the cluster is just uh, one container running. So there, we now have a fully, we have a, uh, you know, a, a functioning a Kubernetes cluster with uh, an ingress. Uh, next, we're installing the uh, cube uh, CTL binary. Uh, there, there are ways of running uh, many cubes built in cube CTL command, but this is more, uh, but this gives us more flexibility. Again, we download it. We install it to use a local bin. I've already done the bash completion on my system, so I don't want to uh, run these commands again. But these will provide, enable that uh, the bash completion for kubectl. So, and the, the final thing we do is we uh, we configure uh, as a host. Uh, to, to make it more convenient to access uh, the, the cluster and the, the, the Kubernetes command on it. There, there's the, uh, that's the, the, the container that's running right now. And at this point, you know, I can I run commands like community status or so everything's running. Okay, next we're installing uh, Postgres. Uh, this is, Pulp Operator can deploy its built-in Postgres, but most users will have a separate uh, way of uh, running, uh, of, of a separate Postgres anyway in their production cluster. And in addition to that, uh, this makes it easier because we don't have to recreate the database over and over again. First, we create a namespace. A namespace in Kubernetes is like, is like a problem in uh, OpenShift. And in fact, the two things are actually interchangeable usually. Um, so after we, uh, now that we've created that namespace, we're going to uh, we're going to put the the, uh, the Postgres running inside of it. Okay, so if I do cube, at this point I have you know tab completion only. Get get uh, pods. Well, I can see uh, pods. Dash dash namespace equals db. Yeah, there's the uh, Postgres uh, container running, or it's, or it's creating at this moment, but it'll be up in a second. Running. So uh, the so the uh, question we might want to be asking is like, why do we have all these tools uh, to install Pulp Operator? Uh, tools like Helm and uh, ORLM. 
because like after all the operator is a container image and you could theoretically just pull and run the container image well the, the simple and the, the reason number one is that you have all these additional Kubernetes resources you need to create in order to run the uh, the operator image so you know like a config map is one one example but a custom resource is another the custom well three different custom resource definitions the roles the services accounts so that you can have the permissions and so you can map the, the permissions into your specific namespace so that's that's reason one and the other reason is that you have uh, uh although helm doesn't support it olm supports both automatic updates to you know the pulp operator and the pulp application and this into a managed updates which means like setting policies for when to update. This is a really cool feature of OLM called subscriptions. So uh, next, uh, we're going to install the Helm tool. This does need to be installed on your uh, lap, on your uh, per, your developer's, uh, you know, a personal system. Uh, although it. it we are going to put in the path, although it may, it's you know, it's not strictly necessary to run it from the path, though. I mean, to run it from a, a system portal like user local bin. Now that it's installed, uh, first we create a, a, a Kubernetes namespace for running pulp. Next, uh, well, we, we're just going to make our, our rest of our commands easier. We're going to make it so that by default, all commands run in this, uh, the namespace called pulp. And now we add the, the repo, uh, which is just our nice GitHub URL. And now we tell Helm to install this application named pulp operator. And yeah, it's although it's not required to create the namespace, that is a it is a best practice, and it's and many uh, you know multi-tenant clusters will be required. It's the only way you can get the permissions you need. Uh, now that we have so that at that point the like the the operator container is running, but to actually uh, but to actually get pop pulp started, we have to we create the custom resource. So we're gonna we have a custom resource here, which is very well quick. It defines uh, several pieces of configuration for pulp, and you know these look really cryptic, but uh, basically we're saying like the uh, the the Postgres host is just it's just the uh, you know the container running with that host name or that service name in Kubernetes, basically. Uh, so, and we have other, so the, the rest of the config is straightforward, you know, like the name of the host and the in fact we're using Nginx as the ingress. So we're going to apply this. And I should have, so we can watch and see how, uh, how, how long it takes to or wait for the, wait for the pull applicates to come up. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to mention tab completion there. So it is, yeah, the, the, the pod is running, yeah. Oh, sorry, the pod, the, the, uh, the, the pulp controller manager pod is running. Uh, the other pods like content are still being started. Like it's pulling the image. And that's, that's probably the largest portion of the delay. Uh, but it does only take about a, like a, a minute or two depending on the speed of your system internet connection. It also has to initialize the database. That's that's actually about as long as the uh, the download time. Yeah, the migrations take a really long time. Yep. Like five minutes probably. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think it could, we'll see, I thought, I thought it was shorter than that, but uh. Point is, we will not need to do this delay when we go to uh, show off other deployment methods. Other, um, 
there's another command you can run to uh, to check the status, but this is a this oh, but it basically relies on the prior command being in a better state. So pulp. This is basic. Uh, it's check. It's showing the status of list of the uh, of the tasks and the uh, and the and looking. Can, can you zoom in? Oh yes, of course. Yeah, it's, it's been two minutes, so. Anybody have any questions so far? Any questions about uh, Minikube or Helm? Hey, Mike, is all of this documented on our website? Uh, yeah, I'll show the documentation right now. Uh, Paul, operator. Uh, uh. So this we do list we uh, we do consider Helm to still be under development, uh, but you know, there's the prerequisites. There's the uh, creating uh, adding the Helm repository. The namespace and uh, and the install command, and then and then creating the custom resource. Well, that's a much simpler custom resource there. And later methods uh, such as the OLM are documented here. I'm going to run uh, the get deployment real quick. OC get deployment. OC launch. Wait, that's a. Yeah, the, the Umberto, the migration. Uh, yeah, look at on, that one. Look at the logs for that one. Yeah. yeah. Okay, it's it is. I guess you're right. It does take closer to five minutes. Oh yeah. Yeah. But but we also remember we have, this is a uh, you know the operator uses the uh, the the pulp well by default. It, it uses the pulp uh, container image that has all the plugins installed. So therefore all the migrations, all the stable plugins, I mean. Uh, another option would be to use the Galaxy uh, uh, image. That's also, that would be a smaller set of plugins. I'm gonna begin. Uh, oh, no, oh, nice! They, it finished. The pulp API is initializing. Pulp API is is running as its content. It says the ingress is ready. So it's a yeah. Give it a few more seconds. Yeah, it's it's not, this is this is it's basically just starting up the containers now, and they're running a few scripts as they start up. And any second, I was going to realize that the service is up and listening on on the on the on its ports. Looks like it's done. Yeah. Yes, status is true. There, it is up. Uh, 
And now we can uh, hold that land. And we probably just need to do HTTPS. But it's a pulp, a pulp that lab. And if it's complaining, I'll just do incognito window. Looks like it's doing it. I know, it looks like it's doing its thing. There it goes. You got it. Hooray. We are up. And we have we have we have a, a worker API and content. Hooray. So, so that is Helm. Uh, and because we installed pulp like an like it's a single package because that's Helm basically advertised itself as a package manager. Uh, we can uh, we can just run a single command to uninstall pulp. No need to delete all those individual resources. Actually, Helm uninstall pulp, and then we'll uh, delete the namespace pulp. we go so now for rlm so uh as i already mentioned this is a like if you were to install openshift this would be installed by default but you can always just install it as a, a component on top of kubernetes since after all like openshift is, is a distribution of kubernetes some of the linux distribution so for an analogous to so we will we'll set a couple of environment variables real quick I should point out if you already have the o, uh, the OC command install, like the OpenShift client, and you have a uh, symlink for kube ctl, uh, that would work too. We would not need to install uh, the kube ctl command separately. Uh, so now that so there we we that, that last command included installing uh, the operator SDK binary, and now we can say we're going to install the uh, this, comp uh, this component, the service, uh, into the Kubernetes cluster. It's basically part of the Kubernetes uh, infrastructure now. And you know, OLM has like a running and container everything because one of the things it's responsible for is uh, you know managing the updates of, of the of the uh, of the operators. And so it's there's in addition to automatic updates, there's, there's all the, there's policies for wind updates. Uh, it's taking, it's going to take, not going to take too long, but if I run this uh, open shift command, I can see the, to get deployment. What's the? How did? Oh, let's see. Oops, I mean, UTL.
I'm talking with a blank on how to uh, exit the namespace, but uh, there it goes. It's running now. There's all these uh, components that are now uh, running inside the, uh, uh, all the all these resources that now exist and that are that are running inside the, uh, the on on the Kubernetes cluster. Okay, next we're going to uh, now that we've OLM is running inside uh, Kubernetes, we can uh, create the we can create a uh, or we can actually install an, uh, the individual call operator. First, we create a namespace. We're going to create a new one, and we're going to make our commands default to it. But and so to actually deploy, uh, run the operator, we create uh, two uh, resources. First is the operator group. An operator group is uh, operator group uh, def is, is like you know it, it contains the the operator, and permissions are set on it. For example, so you can have you know. It's part of the overall scheme for multi-tenancy with the namespace and prisons inside the namespace. Next, we create a subscription object. And the subscription object is really cool because it it it, it follows uh, the pulp. It follows pulp in the operator catalog. Uh, later on, uh, uh, if we uh, we will, we'll, if we have time, we'll get to the uh, the like the the web GUI, the website right, for for the uh, operator hub, and you'll see it there. But this is the command line access to that to the pulp operator from there. And so, and see that's part of the update policy. So, and again, we we just apply the custom resource, but this time instead of taking five minutes, it'll take about like thirty seconds or one or one or two minutes. Oh, see, I mean, okay. It's time the migrations have already been run because we're using the same database. I have to copy it. No migration is to apply. Yep. Oh, yes. It's good. The command. Uh, the A log SF pulp operator controller manager. Helps if I use the yes, correct, it does. <laughs> yeah, use the correct consonant. Operator task synced. Yeah, pulp API is uh, running now. So we can refresh our status page. Oh, no wonder it wasn't tab completing. I was using OC rather than OK. See how much I get OpenShift and Kubernetes mixed up? It's almost if they're the same thing. The pulp application is still starting. But there's just a delay.
I don't know, my, la my laptop is swapping profusely or something, but I... Yeah, I think your laptop is struggling. Yeah. Okay, let's let's go easy on the laptop then. Because you can see that the status API is being um, requested. Yep. Uh, and it's not just by you in the browser. It's being requested by our um, health checks and readiness probes. Right, yeah. So the application is responding, but I yeah. think the cluster is just struggling. Right, I think I think so too. Uh, so uh, let's continue then. Uh, so uh, the way we clean up is similar to what, uh, what we did before. Uh, first, we delete the namespace. Uh, and to clarify, this is the way we generally recommend people install uh, Pulp Operator now. We recommend, uh, but uh, o OLM with a subscription light and an operator group is is the most featured way of doing it, and the one that we uh, we 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 support the most. You know. Oh, I have to press enter, yeah. Okay, pulp all and deleted. Next, we, uh, we, we delete the cut, those three cuts and resource definitions. I showed earlier on the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the underlying implementation files. And next, we delete the, uh, the, the cluster role bindings and, uh, Cluster rules, so all the permissions we set, we created for it uh, to be uh, applied within uh, as a template for basically for the the namespace. So after now that we've uh, so now we have a couple of uh, uh, more advanced ways of installing the uh, the subscription. Uh, this way involves installing from source and. There, you know, usually the reason you would do this is if you either uh, didn't, as if you wanted to like develop pulp, especially with the latter option. Uh, and this time, instead of uh, we're going to be using, <laughs> we're going to well, for, for, so for, so because of the of because of the way the operator is built from. Uh, uh, the operator framework is run in Go, and our operator is run in Go. So, as part of that, we install uh, uh, some Go packages in our system. These can be installed in your uh, in your home directory instead of system wide. Also, so, we, So those are batch completion there. I don't need to do this. It's already it's already been done earlier. And or I mean I already did this I already did this before I started the demo. And so basically uh, we are going installing our favorite scripting language, which is GNU Make. That's uh, it is no you know commonly used to build and deploy uh, software. But we uh, and it's effectively used as a scripting language uh, for when you're installing uh, <laughs> installing our operator from sort from the source repo. So in this first method, uh, we are the pulp operator will still be pulled as an image uh, from the Quay uh, registry. However, uh, the manifests are coming from the local uh, Git repo. First, we're creating our namespace, and we're setting that namespace. Next, we're cloning the pulp operator git repo and seeding into it, and we're setting this environment variable for later. Wait, I'm sorry, I mean, we're setting the variable and running make deploy. Okay, I need to hold on one second. The go binary is not found.
Let me just try that then. Okay, I thought that was uh, done previously. My mistake. So we're now back to using running the make command, uh, the make deploy command. Worth uh, note that there are other uh, make commands that make available, like uh, sub commands. We can do make build and make a uh, Docker push. That's if you were to make a change to your, the, the, the Go code that comprises the pop operator image, you would uh, run a make with those two uh, uh, subcommands. Whereas make deploy is, 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 uh, uses the image and, and just deploys uh, according to the subscription manifest that are inside the pop operator repo. So, now that we've now, we've, now that we've uh, deployed the operator, similar to how we would from the OLM commands, we are we just apply the custom resource, and we're back at the same. We're, again, we're in the same uh, we're in the same state as we did uh, as we were at previously, with the with the OLM commands, the same exact uh, code is uh, and configuration is running. And there's no need for us to wait because you know how it's 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 gonna it's it's just running the scripts to start up the cluster. So we can clean up now. Again, like the same command, basically the same exact commands as previously. It's deleting a lot of things right now, and it deletes the namespace. Because basically, all, all those pods, the containers, uh, uh, the, con uh, the, the custom resource exists in the namespace, whereas the custom resource definition and the cluster role and the cluster binding are cluster wide. So there we go. And then there's one more. Final way we can uh, install pull from the source repo. Uh, this time, instead of uh, using, uh, we don't, instead of using that container image, we're not even going to run a container image. Basically, we're just going to run that uh, the uh, the pull operator application as a Go binary. Oops, so already did that. And now that we're in the pull operator, we're going to make install. And now we're running, here we go, we're running the pulp operator go binary like on our laptop here. And it's running, it's showing you the same output it would uh, it did previously. Do you know why this is uh, not going up? You are missing DCR. You just started the operation. Oh, right, yeah. All right. So we apply the same uh, CR as we did previously. And there we go. There's all our, uh, our familiar pods. So this, so yeah, because we're running it as a Go binary, and we can we can, we can just uh, on the developer laptop, we're not needing to pu uh, pull the 
uh, the image from Quay. This is the fastest and quickest way to to make changes to develop your uh, operator or create your local fork. So, so yeah, that's the. That's it for all the uh, other ways of installing uh, installing pulp operator that we uh, that we thoroughly document ahead of time. There's one more thing we're going to show real quick, which is from the o OpenShift catalog. And if you have an OpenShift, uh, we have an sorry. Let's say you have an OpenShift cluster. Uh, uh, you, and you have the administrator GUI. You can go to the operators, and you know, see all these operators available. You type in pulp, and voila, here's our web GUI for installing it. And although we're we're short on time, though it's all already eleven. It's already uh, fifty three after the hour, so. Instead of, of going through going through the rest of the process, we're just going to take questions. Sounds good. Thank you, Mike. <clears throat> yep. Any any questions? Going. Going. Gone. Awesome. Thank, thank you. You stop recording. Thank you, Mike. Um, it says we're still recording. Oh, there we go. <laughs>